Okey, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan uh, selamat pagi. Uh, terima kasih. Waalaikumsalam. Okey, uh, terima kasih kepada semua uh, di atas kehadiran uh, pada bengkel kita. Uh, buat makluman juga uh, for information uh, this workshop is uh, sponsored. Okey, sponsored by Cam. Uh, dan uh, saya juga ingin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada uh, Puan Faridah kerana uh, sudi untuk berkongsi uh, uh, berkaitan dengan uh, ELIP ni. Uh, Puan Faridah nanti dia akan uh, memberi uh, apa nama uh, introduction lah. Uh, what is ELIP and so on. Then after that baru dia akan pergi ke uh, topik, the main topic lah which is uh, how to use lesson and how to use workshop. Okay, so Puan Faridah, are you ready ya? Eh? Okay, yes I am. Terima kasih Puan Faridah. Okay, kami serahkan kepada kita. Eh. Okay, sure. So, can I share? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everyone. Um, thank you for being here. Um, well, first and foremost, uh, thanks Dr. Az to the faculty, uh, in particular Dr. Azhar and um, everyone okay, uh, at CAM for inviting me to share with you my experiences in using workshop as well as lesson uh, in Ethiopia. Um, before I begin, I would just like to mention that uh, I'm not an expert in ELIP. I'm not an expert in workshop. Um, there are others in the faculty um, who are experts um, in the field itself, in particular those of you who are in learning sciences. Um, what I'm sharing here is I'm sharing you uh, my experiences from a user perspective. Okay, now um, if I may, uh, let me just share with you first um, on individuals, uh, on um, what ELIP is all about, very quick uh, introduction to what ELIP is all about and um, for one thing, uh, please note that this is not a lecture session. This is a workshop session. Um, and do uh, chip in. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, chip in as much as possible because we want, I, what I want to do is, I just want to share very, very quickly uh, what is going on and the rest of the the session is going to be very much on interaction um, and if I can uh, if you want to share your screen later uh, just give a shout to Dr. Azaha so that he can allow you to share your screen because um, ideally, it would be good to have this done in a lab so that I can come around and help every single one. But since that is not possible, uh, let us just look at it. Uh, well, we have to use this technology um, to help us. Yeah. Now, um, I think there are a couple of us. Uh, who might not be familiar to ELIP. In order to get to ELIP, if you see, um, you know, the address here, you just kind of like type elip.unimas.my and you will come to this particular page. Uh, but before that, um, this is the page that you will see uh, when you go to ELIP first. Uh, you just sign in to with your Unimas single ID. Uh, okay. And you will come to this landing, but, uh, this landing page. Okay, this landing page. On the left side here, you will see the list of your courses. Okay, um, all the courses that you have uh, should be listed here. 
All right. So what I would suggest you do is you just click on the course that uh, you that you're going to be teaching next semester. All right. Um, you notice that this particular course, this is blank. This is a blank course. Um, and before you begin anything, uh, I would suggest that you click on this particular button. You notice that when you click on that particular button, the edit button, what happens is you begin to see weird squiggly um, icons. All right. Um, just play around with this for people who may not be familiar with it. Okay. Some of you, um, what I like to do here is this. For any single one of my courses, I do not like for it to be uh, arranged according to date. I like it to be arranged according to learning units. So what I do is I click on the administration component here. If you see, there is one there that says um, edit settings. If you were to click on that, okay. Uh, now, what you see here is you can edit. Uh, all the settings here, okay. In particular, I do not want the format to be a weekly format, but I want the format to be a topics format. Uh, for this particular course, I only have um, eight units, okay. I only have eight units. Um, and oh, by the way, you can add units on um later if you want if you feel the need to um or you can delete units as well okay uh, i'll show you how to do that shortly and if i don't um i would suggest that um remind me about it yeah you can also change uh the appearances okay uh if I'm not mistaken, um, the last, when we're talking about Elip before, um, Morpheus before, you can change the colors. I think now you can also change, but, um, you know, uh, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I prefer to keep it simple. Uh, for those of you who wants to change, yes, you can definitely change uh, how to do that. Mm. Let me see. Well, anyway, we can easily find that out how to do it and, and so on and so forth. Now, um, there are some people uh, you might want, you might prefer your students to present, to upload in groups. You can do it here. Okay. Uh, but then again, I, I would suggest that when you do group modes, uh, later when students register, uh, you yourself, you have two options. Either what you do is uh, you allow students to choose groups themselves or you are the one who put them into groups. Yeah. And right now, when you're talking about separate groups or visible groups, yeah, I would suggest if you do not know how to use that, you can always click on that question, the question, okay, right, uh, to find out more about what this is all about. Okay, so now I don't want to change anything first, so I just click cancel. But if you are satisfied with what uh, you have uh, done here, okay, if you're satisfied with that, then I would suggest that you click save and return, okay. Now, you notice that I want to do everything according to topics, okay. Now, um, for each particular topic, 
if you see first and foremost, most of us are going to be um, assessed later according to your blended learning, yeah? Uh, your blended learning, uh, what do you call that, status. Um, and there are stars here, okay? Now, the goal is to get everything green, right? The goal is to get everything green. And in order to get the stars, um, the goal is to get, if possible, as many of your students um, active in this particular course. Okay, if I can show you the course that I did last semester. Okay, I had three stars. Yay, <laughs> that is good. All right, um, okay. So do I have, are there any questions about Elite that I can um, answer here? Uh, that I can answer uh, for those who are new? Uh, I would like to just add on lah, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, yang berkaitan, especially those yang uh, seperti uh, Encik Idris dan juga uh, Dr. Hanim lah. Uh, kalau you nampak dekat our, your monitor ni, seperti yang dimaklumkan lah uh, oleh Puan Faridah tadi, uh, untuk star tu kan, okay, star ni, uh, although you uh, achieve the minimum requirement, like for example resources lah, Uh, in bracket 7, activities, in bracket 3, assessment, in bracket 2. So that is a minimum requirement lah, okay? Although let's say uh, you have uh, maybe resources, 20, uh, 40 resources in your ELIP. Activities, uh, maybe let's say 5 activities, eh? and assessment, let's say 10 assessment in ELIP. But there's no, apa yang kata, uh, Uh, apa yang kata uh, Puan Faridah, uh, in interaction, engagement, we are okay. There's no engagement uh, with student. Let's say uh, you have 100 student, but student yang pakai resources, student yang pakai activity, uh, student yang uh, apa join the assessment, only five. Uh, yang itu uh, tidak dikira. Maka tidak ada star dalam tu. Yeah, I just want to make it clear lah. Okay, thank you. Dr. Azhar, yeah. uh, if we do by group and we ask students to send assignment by group and of course it doesn't fulfill the maybe the minimum requirement, how do we go about it? By group, uh, macam mana contoh dia by group ni? Maknanya we ask students, there are 100 students in the class, uh, they are divided. Oh, I see, okay, yes, yes. Uh, uh, that one, in that case, uh, you need to uh, inform come. Uh, uh, it happened to me also last semester and then uh, I explain to come and then the uh, apa dia akan anggapkan itu sebagai the, and then dia akan bagi star lah that which mean we uh, fulfill the requirement let's say we have 100 and then we have 10 group okay so uh, dalam satu kumpulan tu ada 10 orang for example lah uh, and then uh, hanya 10 saja yang uh, submit the assessment uh, so that one is considered uh, fulfill lah dia akan bagi star. Okay, hey, terima kasih. Ya, yeah, sama. Okay, alright. Um, any other questions that we can, um, you know, uh, take before we continue? Okay, now, when you talk about, uh, let, let me just go directly to what, um, workshop is all about yeah um please note again i'm i just compiled these notes based on the help files in elite okay um and you are welcome to go to the help files of elite which are very very informative um and in order for you to find out more about what this is all about yeah now when we talk about workshop okay um Workshop first and foremost, yeah? although it is an activity on ELIP, we need to know what uh, it is all about, okay, before we even, uh, before we even use it, yeah, uh, first and foremost, um, when you talk about workshop, it is basically a, a peer assessment um, activity, uh, meaning that 
if in um, your particular class, yeah, uh, you have students presenting um, in front of class, and uh, you get you want to have peer assessment of their presentation, uh, but you can't do that in uh, on an online mode, then workshop is the ideal uh, activity for you to use, right? Um, workshop also enables a student um, to um, assess their own work, you know, self-assessment. Now, what is interesting and what is powerful about workshop is that um, it is graded, okay? Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, let me just share with you what I mean by this, yeah? Okay, now, um, let me go back to my course, Career Development, um, Career Management and Planning. This is what grades are all about. Every single course, you will have all these grades. Yeah, there is um, that particular um, column at the, at the side, yeah? and you would have all these particular grades here. Okay, right? You have all of that. Okay, uh, you notice I have quizzes here. Uh, you notice as well that I have um, elements for uh, assessments here as well, even assignments. Okay, right. Okay, so it is recorded all in here. What makes it interesting is that um, at the end of the day, uh, what you need to do is you just need to download all of your grades, okay, all of the grades. Uh, onto either Excel mode or uh, an Excel worksheet, or there's a couple of modes that they allow you to do, and you don't have, um, and it is interesting yeah, for us, um, uh, and it's easier, it makes it easier. Uh, now, if you were to take a look at, um, if you have activities such as, if you notice that here, I have other activities here, all right? Activities such as uh, forums, activities such as forums. Now, these are just activities. Sometimes it is extremely difficult for me huh, to get students to participate in this kind of activities because there is no marks um, attached to it. They, uh, they see that there appears to be no marks attached to it. And what is good about a workshop is this. You add a mark to it. Even when you talk about self-assessment, you can have a mark um, added to it. And marks, well, I notice for students, um, they act as a motivator, <laughs> you know? They act as a motivator. And um, I think a few people were asking, how do you get the stars? Well, that's how you get the stars, guys. Because once you attach an activity with a mark, students, uh, what do you call that, uh, students participate, your stars go up, <laughs> you know, your stars go up. So that's how you can get three stars. Okay, for most of my blended learning courses, I get three stars because of this, yeah, because I attach marks to activities and I use workshops for this so that is how it is possible to get stars okay now as I mentioned earlier um, what stu what students can do is this they can either uh, submit their work either through a file okay or they can submit their work um, using a text editor they can type directly inside that that's what 
uh, workshop is all about. So at the end of the day, it begins with you deciding, um, you know, whether first and foremost, whether workshop is for you. And if it is for you, uh, then to decide what is it that you want workshop to do. Okay. Now, when um, students submit their work up, yeah, onto a, a workshop, you want to set it up. Um, students um, get their work assessed, not only by you as the teacher, but they also get their work assessed by the peers. And if you want, you can also get students to assess their own work, yeah? Right? You can also use, uh, you can also ask students to assess their own work, right? And what is interesting about, uh, about a workshop, which I like uh, to a, a certain extent, uh, I didn't do it for the last semester, but I did it for the previous semester, is that um, students do not know uh, whose work they are assessing, okay? Uh, ELIP has that feature for you uh, to keep reviewers anonymous and submissions anonymous. So they don't know that they are assessing their best friend's work. Uh, they don't know that they are assessing, um, you know, uh, another friend's work. So they don't know, yeah? And uh, if you were to put in a feature of no self-assessment, uh, or if you put in a feature, if you click on the box of self-assessment, sometimes they don't even know that they are assessing their own work, you know? Okay. Now, what kind of grades do you get? Um, there are two types, yeah? First, definitely when students submit up their work, they get grades for the work that they had submitted, okay? And also, uh, they also get grades for assessing other people, okay? Uh, in ELI, uh, this weightage of submission, assessment of submission, and assessment of other peers, uh, of peer submissions, uh, they are normally put in an 80 20 uh, ratio. You can change that. Okay, you can change that. And both of these grades are recorded. Okay, and it's up to you. You might also not want, yeah, um, to to get a uh, to include the grade for submitting other people's uh, work you might just want to include the grade for submission submission meaning that um, it could include lecturers grades on it it can also include peers i mean it depends yeah it depends on how uh, you set up that particular uh, workshop and it also depends on your requirements uh, for that particular assignment if it's an assignment if it's an activity that you 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 want to to up uh, to put up to put up yeah okay now the process uh, for the submission for workshop is this yeah for the submission is this first students submit their work all right uh, and then um, they get uh, submissions from other students that they need to assess okay now uh, when you talk about workshop per se like this it is not a single point activity this is what I like about workshop. It's not a single point in the sense that um, they don't just upload your work like in assignment. Okay, assignment. Uh, if you look at the assignment activity on Elibia, yeah? uh, let me just share that with you. Uh, 
If you look at the assignment activity on ELIP, it is just um, at one time only. They just submit assignment and that's it. Done. The next thing that you do is you just, uh, you as a teacher would grade it. Okay. Workshop is not like that. Okay. Um, if you do your workshop properly, if you design your workshop properly, what happens is you can stagger uh, this activity over three weeks or even four weeks. Yeah, um, like what I did last semester with uh, this course of mine, KMS 2144. Uh, for the first week, what I did was I get them to submit. Okay, first week I get them to submit. Um, well, I have a hundred plus students and tracking down students who have submitted uh, for people who want to delete their work uh, and resubmit. You, you know, that takes time. Yeah, that takes time. Um, the next week, what I did was um, I allowed them to assess their own work. Okay, I, I allow them to assess their own work because I click on that particular button. I allow them to assess their own work. Um, and I also allow them to edit and re-upload. Okay, right. So that's second week. And the third week, what I did was um, I allocate or the system allocated or I allow the system to allocate to each student five of the other peers' uh, submissions. Uh, and they have one week to assess their peers' work. So basically, when you talk about a workshop, it is an activity that can spread over a period of uh, two or three weeks, if you want to. Uh, and for those of you, especially in the upcoming semester, where every single lecture uh, session or every single week, you need an activity. So that's it. You know, workshop can cover um, over three weeks, yeah? And you don't have to worry about activities, okay? Right. So this is not a one-off. It is, it can take, go over a period of, uh, two or three weeks. Okay. Farida, may mm -hmm. I ask a question? Sure. Well, what is the purpose of self-assessment? Um, well, as far as my course is concerned, yeah, what I, I, I wanted to do is this, because the self-assessment here is similar to uh, them uh, after they have uh, after they have submitted up their work for them to re-edit, okay, re-edit from a different, uh, from another perspective, because sometimes when you do work, uh, and if you are in a hurry to submit, there might be mistakes that you do not, um, might not have caught at the time of uh, initial submission. Uh, and during self-assessment stage, this is where you allow them to reflect back on their work, uh, to see whether there are any uh, mistakes uh, that they want to rectify, okay? And I allow them to delete, okay, and re-upload. Okay. okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So, so how long do you give them before they do the uh, self-assessment? Usually, what I, I do is for each part, for each phase, uh, I normally give them a week. That is why, like I say, workshop, yeah, you don't need, uh, it is not like um, a single activity per se, it is a number of activities built inside um, this particular module. Okay? Uh, can you give an example of activity you do for that self assessment? Which is just a reflection or something? Uh, well, basically, what I did was this. Um, I uploaded, uh, I did, um, what do you call that? I did, um, 
I, I, I uploaded a rubric, an assessment rubric. I said that, okay, you are going to be assessing people based on these rubrics. Why don't you assess yourself, your work first, according to this particular rubric? Uh, do you feel that uh, your work is at the lower end or the higher end? Um, and if it's at the lower end of the rubric, um, you know, what is it that you need to do in order to move your work towards the upper end? Okay. Yeah. So I basically use the same assessment you, rubrics. You. Yeah. Does that okay. answer your question? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Great. Now. Morning, Farida. Hey, hi, Betty. How can are you? <laughs> can you show show can, can you show your I mean I've never used workshop before. Macam uh -huh. can you when you explain your workshop activities, boleh buka the your workshop punya page tak? Sure. So that I can understand uh, better. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Um rather than doing that now, because at the end of this particular process, uh, at the end of these, um what I have done here is this. There is a demonstration here. If you can, um, can you guys access this? Yeah, if you can click on this, this is better. Okay. Uh, which one, which one? Uh, this, the last one, the demonstration. Is it possible for you guys to click on that? Demonstration. Uh, tidak kami sih nampak tu. Uh, eh. Hanya ada link to resume aja, yang page link to resume. Uh, okay. Are you? Do you see what I am sharing here? Do you see a slide called FAQ? A slide no. 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 It just a uh, elip elip page. I see your elip page links to resume. Okay. Wait. 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 Okay. Do you guys see it now? Yes. Okay, could you click on that? You should see this. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then you lock it. Okay. Uh, lock in with the, let me see, teacher. And then, the username is teacher, the password is Moodle. Moodle. Huh? Yeah. M O O D L E. Okay. Right? And you click on celebrating cultures. Yeah. Okay, you click on celebrating cultures and there is an activity here called my home country workshop. Okay. So, sekarang ni kita berada dalam workshop ke ni? Yes, this oh. is uh, in this particular page. You see, if you are you guys seeing uh, what I'm seeing at the moment, school yes. model demo celebrating cultures. If you see here, it says workshop my home country. Yep. Okay. So this is what you would see. Okay. This this part here. Okay, is what you would see. Yeah. Uh, if you were to set up your own workshop later, you would see the setup phase, submission phase, assessment phase, grading evaluation phase, and the close phase. Yeah? So we need to go through all the phases? Yes. Ah, I see. Yep. Okay. 
Dr. Zaitun, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Betty? Oh, Shaz. Does that answer your question related to uh, how to set up workshops? You have to go to external link, Farida. It's not, it's not in ELIP. It is uh, an ELIP workshop. It is, it is on ELIP. What I'm showing you here is what Moodle had already set up. Okay? What I think Moodle... It might be, but might be a bit confusing kalau actually dia menggunakan Moodle. Yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. All right. So that's the reason why actually what I wanted to do is I want to show this last. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is the reason why, like I said, um, let's go through the phases of the workshop, shall we? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, first and foremost, um, are you still... can, can, can we open this dalam Elip? Sure. So it goes. Atau maybe kita boleh guna Elip sendiri lah. Senang sikit. Use ah, your yeah, own yeah. Elip first. Yep. Mm -hmm. Use your own Elip. Okay. Uh, now, what I would suggest that you do is this. Okay. Uh, go to Elip. Go to Elip here. Okay. Are you are you guys seeing my Elip right now? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Maybe uh, uh, Puan Farida, maybe uh, mm -hmm. before that and maybe boleh tunjuk juga uh, bagaimana uh, kita nak on atau off editing lah. Uh, uh, no problem. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now I would suggest before we even go to do a uh, workshop. Okay, um, could I share first? Uh, let me see. Um, okay, I want to share this. Um, I want to share with you my assignment. Uh, do you see? Uh, what yes. My, yes? Yep. Okay. Now, this is the assignment I used last semester uh, that I converted into workshop on ELIP. Always go back to what you want. Um, your, is, it, is it an assignment? Is it an activity? Is it a project that you want to grade? Yeah? For me, I began with this assignment. Okay. Uh, 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 so yeah. Okay. Uh, boleh disable nya pun apa ya? Toge ya kan? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is the assignment that I turn converted into ELIP. Always start with either an assignment, uh, a project, um, anything. Yeah, that requires a student to present, and that requires them uh, to be assessed by their peers. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right? Always begin with that. Because otherwise, a uh, workshop doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah? So, this particular assignment of mine has two outputs. Yeah? One of the output is a poster that I want them to present um, and I want their peers to assess that. Okay? Right? So, this particular assignment, um, I have two different activities for this particular assignment. The first activity is the assignment activity itself where they upload the action plan. Okay? Uh, this has nothing to do with workshop. The second component is the poster. Now, that poster requires for student to upload it, do a presentation on it, and their presentation and that particular poster is commented on by their peers. Okay. So this particular component here, the poster component, is what 
uh, I use uh, to base my workshop on in Elib. Okay, is that is that okay with everyone? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Because uh, that's what I say, you have to begin with what you want, uh, what you want to do, actually. You just don't go to, uh, to workshop and say, I'm going to create one for that. You know, it always goes back to your course and what it is that you want to do on that, yeah? Okay. All right. Um, hi, Dr. Rayman. Happy birthday. So, <laughs> right. So, the next thing is this. All right. Um, do you see my ELIP page again? Yes. Okay, great. Now, uh, if you go to ELIP, uh, first and foremost, yeah, uh, you will come up with this blank page. Yeah, uh, I would suggest that you turn editing on. Um, is everybody clear so far? Did I leave anybody out? <laughs> All right. Now, the next thing that you want to do is I want to put uh, this workshop in this second um, topic. Yeah. So. What I do is, uh, let me see if I go too, too fast. I just click on this button. It says add an activity or resource. Okay. And you should have this particular pop-up. All right. Dr. Hanim, are you okay so far? Okay. And then you just scroll down. And there is workshop there. Okay. Uh, on the right, you can see what um, the, what do you call that? Um, well, explanation of what this can do, right? So you just click add. Okay. Are you guys okay so far? Yes. All right. Now, what I would suggest you do is you just click the name, um, call it, um, okay, now, um, just write down what you want that particular workshop to do, yeah? Uh, this workshop, um, what do you call that? Okay. Uh, presentation files on here. Uh, your peers can then assess me on this, okay? And if ever, whatever you want to write here, the description of this, if you want it to appear, I would suggest that you click the display on, uh, click display description on the course page, okay? Is that okay so far? Yeah? Now, you will notice that as far as workshop is concerned, okay, you have many, many settings here. One is the grading settings. Um, click on the arrow button to show you more, more options. Okay, assessment button, more options, feedback button as well and so forth. Let's go through the first one. Okay, now, if you are not sure about what anything does, yeah, let's say that you don't know about accumulative grading, what I would suggest is you click on that arrow, uh, on that um, question mark button, okay, 
to so that you they will be able to explain to you what this whole thing is all about okay normally what i do is i just use the default setting unless there is something that i want to um include yeah just like for example here um how many files do I want my student to submit? Here I say, I want them to submit poster and presentation files. Okay, okay. Uh, submit, this is where I give specific instruction. Your poster in PDF format. Okay, your presentation um, should be hosted uh, either on YouTube because there is a restriction on the volume of the number of files, you no, know, the size of files being uploaded on um, Elite. So I would suggest that if the students were to do to upload a post, uh, a presentation, yeah, a video, I would suggest that they host that either on YouTube or they can either host that on OneDrive. Yeah? Uh, you either uh, host that on YouTube or OneDrive, and then, um, you know, they just provide the links and just, uh, and just, what do you call that? Uh, provide the links here, okay? So what I want them to do is because I have two uh, outcomes, okay? When I have two outcomes, I need to have two files, right? Okay, I have two outcomes, I need two files. If you have one outcome, one file, right? And then here, um, this is where you uh, click, yeah, submission attachment, allowed file types. Uh, what do you want them to submit? Okay, you had already mentioned, okay, uh, that you only want PDF format. So what you do here is you just say PDF, okay, PDF. Right? Otherwise, students need, um, they're going to submit, even though you said that you wanted a PDF format, but they are going to try their luck and submit it uh, using uh, document format, even, um, you know, um, presentation format. Okay. Um, and you're going to get a headache yeah, uh, with all the different formats. Uh, I would suggest that uh, you just type in what format you want, okay? So if you leave this blank, if you leave this blank, you are going to get all sorts of formats coming up, okay? And then here, uh, click on maximum. I normally go to yeah web uh, site upload 10 MB. Okay, now the next thing is this: Do you allow them to submit after deadline or not? If you do, you click on this button. If you don't want that, uh, leave it blank. Okay, right. Uh, and is everybody with me so far? Yeah? Yes, we do, yes. Okay. All right. Now, um, we have done the submission settings. Okay. The next one is assessment settings. Okay. Are there any instructions for your assessment? What do, what do you want them to do for assessment? Okay, uh, do you want them to follow a rubric? Okay, um, or do you want them uh, to write in any comments? Right, if not, 
because I normally, as you have seen in uh, my assignment earlier, um, I already have a rubrics that I had already preset. Okay, so I leave this blank. And Dr. Zaitonia, if you want your students to assess their own work, you click here. Otherwise, leave it blank. All right? Are we okay so far yes, on that? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? All right. Okay. So we're done on assessment. Okay. The next one is you click on feedback. Okay. Now, feedback here is this, guys. Um, do you want uh, the students yeah, to provide uh, apart from apart from the um, rubrics that you had provided for assessment? Okay. Uh, do you want students to write uh, constructive criticisms on the on the what do you call that? Uh, on that particular assessment or not. If you do, you might want to click on enable and optional if you want to, but if you insist on every single assessment, it, it must be accompanied by um, a, a constructive criticism file. Um, you know, you can just click enable and require it. Okay. It depends on um, the kind of activity that you want the students to do. Yeah. Uh, if you want, um, for example, right, you can just use, I, I can see a, a, a specific use for this in either counseling. Yeah. Uh, you can just, Possibly, you might want a student to comment on um, um, the style, the, the voice, the um, body language, for example. Okay, uh, this is where you might want to use it. Otherwise, uh, what I normally do is I would just use the, just use click default on this. And if you want students to upload um, attachments, uh, feedback, so you just click on that. Again, what is the file type and what is the limit? Okay, what is the limit? So are we okay as far as feedback is concerned? Yes. Yeah? Now, the next thing here is this. Um, what is interesting about workshop as well as lesson, yeah? It allows for practice. It allows for practice. Uh, it also allows for you to give an example, okay? Uh, I don't use this feature because uh, in every single, every single time I have an assignment like this, what I do is, I would take, uh, I would give a, approximately a month from the time I uploaded the assignment to the time I close all activities on that assignment. I normally give it a month. And for the first two weeks, I would take questions and answers about this particular assignment. And during the course of normal lectures, I would give examples. Okay, so that's why I don't use this feature. But for you, uh, I would suggest that uh, if definitely face-to-face -face might not be uh, possible yeah, um, this coming semester, you might just want to use this. Okay, because you might want to show an example of what a poster is like and how you want to assess that poster and so on and so forth. That is, if you use a poster, uh, if you want the students to submit uh, their presentation video, um, you might want, and if you want the video to be in a cartoon format, uh, you might want to give examples of what 
uh, you of the submission that you want yeah otherwise you keep it blank because sometimes in uh, I mean face to face there are certain things that we take for granted because we are in direct contact with the students yeah um, and and we forget that uh, when we go to online um, that is not always possible okay so we have to think about ways and means um, to replicate our um, um, experience online yeah? so uh, I think that using examples using practice um, you know is actually better for 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 all the for for all um, involved especially when uh, you might not have uh, sufficient time to allow for questions and answers okay now right so the next one is availability okay availability here is opening and closing date okay if you want i would suggest that um you know um that possibly uh, uh especially now when we are going online for most of the time yeah this coming semester um for every single week you need an activity so i would suggest <coughs> give a week for the students to submit um and then uh, you might have a period of two days also uh, where you check whether has everybody submit has submitted you check whether you know um, is the submission in the correct format and so on and so forth you might just give it a week I normally give mine a week so here what you do is you just click both um, and give the dates that you want now I would highly recommend that uh, you leave this um, box unchecked yeah? uh, switching to next phase because you would want uh, to have greater control over that rather than clicking that box yeah okay because you want to manually uh, switch because uh, Sometimes if you manually switch, it gives you greater control over the whole process of a workshop. Okay. The next part, um, to me, uh, I don't deal with this so much because I normally use um, individual work for my workshops. Okay. Uh, I don't use grouping for workshops, but if you want to use groupings, this is where uh, you click that, especially here, you see the group mode. Do you want the groups to be separate mode, separate or visible? Visible here means that, you know, uh, although the group works in, uh, although the members work in a group, they can also see who is in the other group other groups but if you're talking about separate groups it's as if that uh, ellip just uh, goes around the whole uh, activity is just within themselves only okay all right so for me i normally use no groups because that is what my assignment is all about it's an individual assignment but if your assignment is a group assignment then you would need to to do that yeah restrict access activity completion uh, now activity completion here is this okay um, the students themselves can mark the activity as complete okay uh, either manually or automatically, I would suggest you just leave it uh, default, okay, right? And then, well, the next thing is save and return. That's it. Save and return. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, I need to. Yep. I need to change that first. Okay. Right. Mm, something else. Submission phase and assessment case cannot overlap. Yeah, lah. True also. Okay. Right. Hopefully that's okay. Right. So. Okay, guys. Are you guys okay with me so far on that? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, workshop uh, iconnya memang macam pair kan? Icon, yeah. Icon untuk workshop. Yeah. Uh. This is the icon for lesson. Uh, lesson is like that. I see. Okay. Okay. Let me see. We have somebody here on chat. Uh, Seda. Seda. Okay. okay. All right. So, now what do we do next? Okay. Okay. Before I move on. Okay. Where did I click just now? I click on this part here. Mm. Okay. All right. Then, you see what happens here is this. <clears throat> okay. Right. Huh? Uh, so, during the time that you had uh, done this, yeah? Okay. Where well, during the time that you have done the setup phase, um, students cannot do anything. Okay? They cannot do anything. I would suggest that until you are ready to, um, until you are ready yeah, to share this workshop with your students, I would suggest that you hide your, uh, your activity. Okay? Until you're ready to share with students, hide. So if you notice that your workshop, the, um, the workshop becomes a little bit more dim. Okay? Right? I would suggest that you hide. Okay. So, next thing is click on your workshop. Okay. And you will see um, this particular, what do you call that? Um, or shall I say, oh, let me see, what do they call this? I can't even, uh, what do they call this? Yeah, you can see the phases there directly. So if you can see that, uh, what happens is you have set up the workshop description, you have provided information, instructions. The next thing that you want to do is you want to edit the assessment form. Yeah, you have edited, you want to edit the assessment form. So you just click on that. Now, this is where what I will, this is where you type in the rubrics that you have already set up earlier. Yeah? The rubrics that you have set up earlier. Now, my assignment, I said that I want uh, pictures, graphics, and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, because I'm editing a poster, so what I want to do is I want to give this one here uh, pictures and graphics. Okay, pictures and graphics. So, the second one that I wanted to do is visual clarity and appeal. Because remember guys, this is from the rubrics that you had already set up. Okay, this is from the rubrics that you set up already. Now, you might want to have a description of... Uh, pictures and graphics. If it's impressive, it goes from um, here. 
Okay, uh, this is impressive. And what does impressive mean? Okay. Ah, I see. Okay, so maksudnya, aspect mm -hmm. ni maksudnya adalah item yang kita nak evaluate. Yes. I see. Okay. So let's say if we have uh, five items, so that means we need to display all the five uh, aspects. Five items. Okay. Yes. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Understand. You understand? Yep. 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 Okay. So you see what you want to do here is this. If you want, because I'm um, I'm evaluating a poster, I want my students to evaluate a poster, right? Mm -hmm. So it comes, um, it, it, uh, I have already developed a rubric for it, okay? I've already developed a rubric for it. And I want the rubrics to go uh, to assess pictures. I want the rubric to assess visual clarity. I want the rubrics to look at elements, whether all the elements are there, okay? Um, whether it's elements. And then the fourth one is, I want to look at spelling, okay? Here. Right. Uh, let me share with you again here. Okay. You see, you see what I mean or not? Yeah? yeah. These are the rubrics. So what I need to do is I just need to, you know. Um, copy paste everything. Yes, copy paste everything. That's it. Thank you. We all are very familiar with copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so here you just want to give a short description about what graphics, pictures, graphics are all about and um, you know what you consider as impressive and so on and so forth. So you want to use it as a point or scale, okay, and scale, um, what is the scale that you want, okay, right? So normally what I do is I just use point system. It's easier, okay? So that I know from impressive, this is the highest, okay? And then I put the lowest because I don't want to describe everything, okay? I just put the lowest here. I just put down the lowest and um, so uh, students can grade from uh, anywhere between fair to impressive, the lowest to highest. Okay. All right. Is that clear? <clears throat> Am I losing everybody here? <laughs> Okay, guys. I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that is what like, I see. Oh, you yeah. know, uh, chip in. Don't don't that one. Okay, I, it, this is a little bit uh, that one. Yeah. Uh, so once you're happy with this, so save. Okay. And then save and close, okay? If you're happy with this. If you're not happy with this, uh, just click on that anytime and change. All right? Puan Farida. Yes. Uh, Zura ni, apa nama? Oh, Rose. Uh, nak tanya, kalau untuk yang point form, uh, yang akak bagi untuk assessment point tu, uh, so the student will give point in terms of like uh, one to 10 or dia bagi lowest or highest saja? Uh, it depends, yeah. Uh, dekat sini lah you want to do it. It's either point ataupun scale. It's up to you to decide what do you want. Okay. So point it will be like uh, in point form lah, like one uh, like uh, eight point five uh, example. Yeah. Ah okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it it is up to you to decide. Mm. Yeah. You ask them to justify. Ah. Uh, that one you need to ask Dr. Azhar. 
I'm just <laughs> sharing this with you. Apa ni? Apa ni? <laughs> I'm saying if, if, if we ask students to review the work kan, kita ada rubrik betul tak? Ya. Yeah. Rubrik kan kita give points kan betul tak? So the student can give points and then calculate the points. But do you ask them to explain their reasoning? Tak takut dia orang main tik 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 je. Uh, this one, do you remember different that issue, sorry, Different issue than the Workshop uh, this is the reason why at the end of the day, Khan, you have to look at uh, what do you call that? Uh, for assessment, Ninanti, do you want feedback or not? Okay, if you want the students to explain the reason why they give certain uh, points, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then there is a component under. Um, under workshop tadi, okay, that talks uh, yeah. tadi, about tadi tadi feedback. ada puan tadi puan Farida ada mention tadi kan yang ada feedback. So dia yes. bila after submit and then uh, terpulang kepada pelajar sama ada dia nak bagi komen atau tak kan? The overall uh, yes. overall tu kan? Yes, uh, okay. that is the reason. Uh, that is the reason why you uh, do you want to include that or not? It's up to you. The component feedback is from us, I think. Like if no. we submit a work, then we give back feedback. Um, you can do both. Okay, you can do both. All right. Oh, oh yes. Yang wait tu untuk apa ya, Puan? Yang wait satu, kita boleh choose one, two. Yeah, that one is for for what actually? Okay. Now this one here, right? Um. You have, you have Katela for my course. Uh, I, I'm sharing this. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me share this again with you. Okay. Okay, you got it? Yep. Okay. Now, you see my poster rubrics kat sini kan? I have four elements here, right? Okay. Okay. Now, I notice, you notice that each one of them have equal weights. All right. Okay, now um, let's say for your poster, okay, you want visual clarity and appeal to be uh, higher than the rest. Mm -hmm. So you, this is where you increase the weight. You understand or not? Oh, okay. Yeah, let's say that you want this to be ten percent, example. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Um, let me see. No, oh, I have to remember to do this. Okay. This one here, which is visual clarity, you want it as two. The rest two semua one, one, one. Faham tak? Yes, I uh, faham. Uh, so, weight one is uh, like 5% and weight two is for 10%, something like that. Um, Weight if you use weight as one, mm -hmm. weight as one, that means that all the weight as one, uh, that means that out of five, you put one, kan? So, at the end of the day, uh, the student's marks is just going to be uh, five. Highest is five. Um. Okay. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. Uh, anyway, but what I'm saying is that it's all equal. You can play around with this actually. Okay. Yeah? Right. Because what I normally do is, although I you, uh, I don't, um, I normally put all equal weights, mm -hmm. um, but it actually is dependent on you. When you develop the assessment rubrics uh, for your, um, whether it's assignment, I'm going to call it assignment here. Um, the assessment rubrics for your assignment. It's all up to you. Yeah? There might be some assessment elements that you want to emphasize. Then you reflect that accordingly on your um, on your workshop. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, all right. Now, 
the next thing is let's say for example just now kan uh, um shas yeah um uh, you want for the students to give feedback and um and when you review when you think back about your workshop you say that hey i don't think i have done that so you can always click on your description here okay and say yep i want feedback or no i don't want feedback okay so you can always go back um to your uh this one here this is what you call uh the control panel for your workshop okay even here as well if you don't want that okay you can just click on that back again yeah that is the control panel yeah you can always use that panel um to go back and forth okay all right so assessment form tadi katalah you have a, even after the students have uh, assessed then you see that hey your marks are a little bit funny you know in fact uh, what is funny about it you forgot to weigh your um, assessment element so go back edit the assessment form wait okay you can always do that okay right so con this control panel allows you to move uh switch back and forth okay so once you're happy uh with your workshop the next thing that you want to do is for students to submit okay for students to submit right okay so uh one thing nice about this new model uh workshop here is they will always want you to confirm before you switch phases okay you're done with the setup uh phase next is the submission phase okay right you see you're all done with that okay now okay everybody clear on that so far yes <laughs> yeah okay now you notice that this tick marks are muted okay these tick marks are muted um and you notice a couple of things that you haven't done yeah. anything on that so click on that okay all right okay this is the submission setting are you happy with that if you're happy with that then go back okay right all right now allocate submissions this is your instruction for that allocate submissions allocate submissions here is this yeah um what happens is this because this particular course this particular course uh doesn't have any students registered so far on it okay doesn't have any students registered so far on it so it's not uh you're not i'm not able to show that to you but if you were to look back at your uh what do you call that the demonstration um that uh i had provided you earlier the one called sharing uh, cultures sorry celebrating cultures okay uh, celebrating cultures here is this okay right okay now this course has been um uh what do you call that uh this course has been updated yeah the this workshop has been updated so you can't do anything like that uh you you can't do anything uh wait for the course because this course you see if you notice um the button at the bottom here it says that the ticket tape at the bottom here it says that this side 
uh, will be reset in 32 minutes. So this is an ongoing demonstration. If we are to look wait back, uh, if we were to revisit this in about half an hour's time, it would go to the close phase. And then half an hour later, it would go back to the setup phase. Okay. So uh, this particular uh, demonstration is always running. Okay. So Moodle has got a very strong support system for a lot of these particular activities. Okay, guys? Okay. Okay. So um, after that, because you see this is a blank, this is a blank, um, this is a blank page, yeah? This is a blank course. No students are, have registered. Let me share with you what I did for mine. Uh, let me see. I want to see what it is that you guys are watching. Okay, right. Okay, what I did for mine is this, yeah? If you notice that, okay, right. Now, I expect 99 submissions here, all right? I don't know why. This is what Elip did. Maybe because there were only 99 students who registered for my course. At the end of the day, uh, for this particular course, I have 102 students who finally registered for this. Okay, right? Uh, now, what I did here was this. If I were to click on that, okay. Okay, you notice that, um, you notice that uh, this student, Adiana, okay, is reviewed by these five students, okay, and Adiana is going, is reviewing this five. Now, you can set this uh, manually, okay? You can set this manually if you want, all right? Just like Afika here, okay, um, is reviewed by this five, and she, is, she reviews this five students. You can set this manually, or you can set this randomly, okay? You can set this manually, you don't like it, you just delete, okay? Or if you see that, hey, I know Adiana is an extremely good friend to Christy, okay? So I, I don't want Adiana uh, to be reviewed by Christy, all right? Or you can see here that, let's say for example, that Christy appears on the left and on the right of Adiana. And you said, hey, that's not fair. All right. Um, so what you might want to do is randomly allocate. Let Elip allocate that for you. Okay, because for here, you see what happens? I don't allow for self-assessment. Not in this course. The previous one, I think so. I did that, but not for this particular course. I don't allow for self-assessment. Okay? Or you can schedule the allocation so that by the time your submission phase um, is finished and you are about to move that to the next phase, you can allow, you can ask Elip to allocate that for you. Okay, right? Okay, right. So these are your allocation settings. All right. Uh, <clears throat> any questions so far as far as allocations are concerned? Sorry, eh, nampak muka Encik Idris kat situ sekejap. <laughs> Glamour you. <laughs> All right, so you notice that allocation phase here, right? Now, I, you notice that I have allowed for late, late submissions, okay? And because I'm the teacher for this course, 
the, the restrictions of time are not uh, applicable to me, right? So once you get that ready, once you are, when students have submitted, you notice that everybody had done the submission uh, and in the proper format that you want. Um, the next thing is, uh, and then after that, you allow Elite to allocate who supervise, uh, who assess who, okay? Uh, you had gone through that and say that no friends are assessed by friends and so on and so forth. So the next thing that you do is you click to assessment phase. Okay, I'm going back to my old one here, yeah? So, and before you do that, uh, please remember that um, if you allow students to already submit, so make sure that they can submit, huh? okay? You unhide that workshop, okay, right. So next thing is you want to do to switch, okay? Again, before you switch to any phase, ELIP will give you, will ask you whether you are confirmed, whether it's confirmed. Okay, right. Okay, now, this is where students can assign, can assess. Okay, students can assess. Now, um, just be aware that uh, when students assess, <clears throat> when students assess, uh, what happens is this. Yeah, okay, you will get all these assessments, yeah? All that assessments. When students assess, so the next thing after they have done all the assessment, you want to switch to the next phase, the grading phase. Okay, now in the grading phase, uh, sorry, before I forget, yeah, assessment phase, students can um, can modify their um, assessments if they want to. Okay, normally for that particular phase, I give about a week. Okay, during that time, they are free to modify. I also have groups where uh, some students never bother to assess their friends, but as far as they are concerned, the assessments are concerned, they have been assessed by five friends. Uh, so this is where you begin to start barking at the students, you know, to, to assess, okay? Right. After you're done all of that, then comes your component. Okay. This is where you review all those ratings, all those grades, all the assessment. Please remember that you always have the last say in this. Okay. You can modify that if you want. Uh, you can provide feedback to students on that. Uh, please remember at this point in time, students cannot see your feedback, but they can see their friend's feedback. Okay, right? The next thing that you do is after you're done all of that, you can switch and you can close it. Okay, you can close that, right? So Dr. Azahar, that is actually the end of my presentation on workshop. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, bila bila kita dah close, eh, dah macam the this uh, set up uh, all the faces. Uh -huh. So uh, that's mean uh, boleh boleh pergi ke dia punya front page tak? Uh, which front page? Front page of? Uh, topic two and. Eh? Okay. Yep. So that's mean uh, kita dah siapkan lah. Macam uh, atau macam mana? No, no, no. Huh? Um, closing means that um, students cannot submit, can students cannot do anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you close that, 
uh, what you do is you want students to submit, right? Okay. If you want to students to submit, you notice what I did just now is this. You are already closed here. Oh. Okay, but there are no submissions. I see. You okay. Notice that. Yeah. So switch back to submission. Ah. Switch back to submission, and then students can submit. Oh, okay. Understand now. So that okay. mean. So mm -hmm. that mean if uh, I thought uh, just now I thought that uh, when when the process is closed, so so that mean they are ready for no. students to participate. No, no. Uh. no. So no. that mean when when you already uh, in the closed phase, maksudnya memang habis lah activity yes. workshop. Yes, habis uh, activity. activity. So if we want the student to participate in the mm -hmm. presentation. Then uh, kita perlu berhenti on the submission phase. Yes. Ah, uh, see, okay, understand. Okay, understand. Eh? Yep. At submission, that is why saya uh, as a rule, a, a rule of thumb, saya always give, uh, saya always allow one week. Uh, okay, one week kan, because one week tu, uh, especially during what online activity nanti when we uh, provide a report. Uh, can uh, we provide the weekly report? Yes. So the online activity is student submit poster. Ah, okay. You know, uh, so that is why I say that uh, this particular, when you're talking about workshop like this, it is not like single, you know, you finish setting up everything and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, you, when you close, uh, then comes to student participation. No, no, no. Um, what you do is you just set up everything first. Okay. Go to set up phase. Are you happy with that? If you're happy with that, you switch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Switch to submission phase. Submission phase is where um, you unhide this uh, workshop on ELIP. Students upload everything. Uh, this is where you check some other. Uh, has everybody submitted everything? Uh, is the file in the right format or not? You know, yeah. you check on things like this. And then after you are satisfied that students have all students have submitted, then you start to allocate mm. the who is uh, reviewing their work uh, and who are they reviewing. Okay? okay, using here the allocate submission, mm -hmm. whether you want random girl, you want schedule girl, and so on and so forth. The number of reviews you Normally, people use five. Sometimes, you can use 30 lah. Mm -hmm. Or if the number of students you have are 30, then you can get everybody to, sub, uh, to grade everybody. Yeah. But, um, tapi you have to understand that the more that you give, <laughs> <laughs> the more work it is for students, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, they're going to be grumbling quite a lot about it. Uh, I, I normally use five. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Number of reviews, you can use it per submission or per reviewer. It doesn't really matter. I normally use per submission. Okay. I see. Okay. So, uh, either you can schedule, you can uh, ask, uh, you know, Elip to schedule it for you. Tapi I always use random allocation so that um, you know, uh, it's easier for me. Uh, for me, it's easier because after that, um, what do you call that? Um, then what you do is, uh, how many you allocate. Mm -hmm. Here also, you see how many submissions you expected. This is based on the participants of your course. Okay. Uh, and how many have submitted, of course, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, how many that you left to allocate, meaning that um, have you allocated everybody's work to their reviewers or not? Kalau belum, then it will let you know. Okay, kat sini. 
Mm. All right. Okay. Then you switch after everybody allocate uh, submitted uh, all the submissions dah allocated. Then you are ready to for the submit for the workshop to move to assessment. Assessment is very simple. This is where uh, reviewers will look at the papers that are uh, given to them and they sub and they review mm. okay and they review again eh? like i said i always use a uh, submission phase one week so i always bagi aside assessment phase another week okay because you don't want too many activities at one yeah. time yeah correct correct yeah so, if you're doing workshops, workshops like this, um, it's easier for you, sebenarnya, uh, for your next semester. You don't have to think about, oh, what activity am I going to do in class this week? You know, this one can give um, at least activity for at least tiga activity, tiga minggu punya activity, very simple. Okay, and you get stars. <laughs> you get yeah. stars. Yeah. <laughs> you have, you know, you have three workshops per semester, two workshops per semester, tiga stars. Mm. <laughs> Automatically. <laughs> How do you think I get the stars? <laughs> like activity berangkai lah kan? Yes. But we can, like in, in my classes, I put this every week, you know, according to the week. Well, it's up to you. Yeah. Should be no problem. Yeah. Mm. So when I put equal week, I put different activity there. So mm. basically, it's just a lot of activities put into one workshop. Itu je lah, Yes. Okay. So you tak pening kepala, thinking of what activity. <laughs> are they, are they, because I noticed one thing. You know, when you do forums, right? Mm. When you do forums, yeah, you see a lot of them uh, you, you see commenting, yeah. but they don't comment on other people's work, you see? Yeah. It's yeah. always like their own comment, or oh, this is what I think, and so on and mm. so forth. You know, they don't that comment on... They don't comment on... Like, Bye! Itulah! Itulah! <laughs> <laughs> but no. this one, they are forced to, you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then and, uh, and then the yang macam reviewer tadi tu, uh, Puan Farida ada mention tadi kan, even even pelajar uh, pelajar dapat tahu tak siapa yang review mereka? You can have it anonymous. Ah, okay. <laughs> you can have it anonymous. Yes, yeah. Takut worry student kan, kalau dia tengok kawan dia komen macam-macam, so dia akan balas balik. <laughs> Yes, that is why there is an option for anonymity. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. there is an option for that. Now you see Dr. Azahawa, I think that two hours is just enough to do workshop aja. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lesson, sorry lah, tak dapat. <laughs> we don't have the time for it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, never mind, it's okay. Maybe uh, ada slot nantilah untuk <sighs> lesson. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> Next semester. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, ada uh, uh, terima kasih uh, Puan Farida. Okay, di atas uh, perkongsian. Dan um, kepada rakan-rakan yang lain ada soalan, any question that you want to ask uh, Puan Farida? Uh, I have um. a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, Puan Farida, untuk yang uh, the student yang bagi feedback of uh, uh, marka like uh, point tadi tu kan? Uh, okay. So how um, kita kita boleh take into consideration dia orang punya marka tu and then how do we macam calculate ke ataupun is there any like average marks for the uh, Okay, alright. Um, can I share uh, with you guys uh, my files? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, uh, Dr. Azahar, would you mind? Um, uh, would you mind 
uh, siapa yang attend this, what I can do is I can share my slides to you guys. Oh, okay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can share my slides so that you know, um, you know, what do you call that? Uh, your reference, your references, yeah? yeah. Because um, I would say that Elite um, actually has a solid, uh, what do you call that? Uh, solid help system as mm -hmm. far as most activities are concerned. Um, and kalau you tak tahu apa-apa, you, if you don't, if you are not sure, you can always ask them. They also have a help punya forum, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but all the links I put inside my presentation file. Um, and if anyone is interested, I will, I, 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 I will share the presentation files to you. Okay, with you. Maybe uh, Puan Faridah nanti boleh uh, email saya lah. Okay, I will email you. Okay. All right. Does that answer your question, Rose? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Dr. Hanim, you have been very quiet. Uh, I'm worried whether um, did we leave you behind on all of these? <laughs> Uh, I think she doesn't have uh, that one. Mungkin okay. Mike, Mike Toto Hani tak 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 dengar. Yes. Alright. Okay. So uh, any more question? Tak ada. Okay. Kalau tak ada, then uh, uh, sekali lagi saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada Puan Farida di atas. Uh, bantuan okay, di atas kesudian untuk uh, berkongsi ya uh, apa uh, uh, apa nama berkongsi tata cara ataupun proses-proses eh, bagaimana kita nak menggunakan workshop uh, di dalam our elip ni okay, and then uh, terima kasih juga kepada semua okay, kerana uh, di atas kehadiran anda ke bengkel uh, di atas lah ya uh, bengkel ini ya yeah, uh, so uh, buat makluman juga Uh, session ni actually uh, saya buat recording so nanti uh, saya akan share recording ini kepada pihak KAM and then pihak KAM akan uh, kongsikan kepada semua pensyarah di Unimas. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and then, right. and then uh, lupa jugalah and then saya nak ucapkan terima kasih juga kepada pihak KAM okay, uh, sebab uh, di atas apa uh, bantuan mereka dalam uh, apa ni Uh, to 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 conduct to organize lah uh, this uh, bengkel yeah, bite size bengkel okay semua uh, kalau tak ada apa apa lagi soalan dan uh, terima kasih dan uh, kita tamat uh, workshop kita uh, di sini.